Welcome to Orange Weekly, presented by Krause Health, alongside Mike Waters. I'm Brent Dax. Coming up, no rest for the weary. Syracuse has Georgia Tech and a little team called Duke coming up on the schedule after a win over Clemson. We'll hear Coach Beheim's thoughts on Syracuse's win over the Tigers on Wednesday night coming up. But, Mike, we start with, uh, you know, Mr. Miyagi's soft balance for young Daniel LaRusso <laughs> once upon a time, right? Well, they got balance on offense against Clemson. Was that a good thing or kind of a necessary evil based on how that game went? I'm going to go with necessary evil based on how the game went, especially going up against a team like Clemson. Uh, they don't usually let like one person beat them. They, they got such a great defensive team. Uh, I think it shows, in a way, it's a, it's a positive thing that Syracuse can get scoring for, from some other guys other than just Tyus Battle and Elijah Hughes. Frank Howard had a pretty nice night offensively. Marek Dolezal had a season-high 10 points. It's funny, you have four guys in double figures, and one of them wasn't O'Shea Brissett. Yeah. Normally, he'd be there. But I say necessary evil, too, because the last time Syracuse had four guys in double figures was a loss to Buffalo. So it doesn't automatically mean you're going to win games and be successful by having that kind of balance. You know, remember the leading score was only had 14 points. So in some games, especially against other teams that are going to put the ball in the basket more, uh, you're going to have to have some scoring from your stars. You know, Tyus Battle with 18, 19, 20 right, points. Right, that was more Notre Dame. You had the big three put up some big numbers in a complementary role. And you mentioned that leading scorer in Elijah Hughes. He broke a string where he had seven consecutive games of 15 points or more. He only scored 14 against Clemson, so, you know, he was right there. So the offense was balanced out. Mike, it was another great defensive effort for Syracuse. Both the Clemson and Notre Dame games overall were good defense, but in particular the second half of the Notre Dame game and really the first half of the Clemson game, this Syracuse zone defense was really cranking. Yeah, I, I agree. And a low press, too. There was a big moment when I've, they put on the press in the second Three straight half. times they put the press on, first two times result in turnovers, then they give up to Duncan, and it's like, okay, um, the surprise is going to take it off. But going back to the overall defense, you know, coming into the game against Clemson, Syracuse had held its three previous opponents to an average of about 54 points per game. And I kind of was like, yeah, okay, but that was Arkansas State yeah. and a bad St. Bonaventure team. And then they hold Clemson to 53. And that 53 is 11 points under Clemson's previous low for the season. So, you know, that was a really good defensive effort. Clemson's not a great three-point shooting team, but they do shoot it well overall, and especially inside the two-point line. And they only made 35% of their shots against Syracuse. Syracuse's zone did a wonderful job of keeping them outside the paint most of the time. And when they did get it in there, they were shooting contested shots. We'll talk about Marek and Barama coming up here shortly, but they did a great job against Elijah Thomas, one of the better centers in the ACC. We'll get to that coming up shortly, but right now we're going to hear from Jim Beheim. It's time for Syracuse Sound Bites. Well, Mike, we're two games into ACC play, and based on how Marek Dolzhai played against Clemson and how Barama Sidibe played, I guess we've just solved the center position, right? We're all good? Yeah, we're good from here. Yeah. Let's move on. Good. No. <laughs> you got to give him credit, though. The, I mean, yeah. he filled up, Marek in this case, every stat you could in the box score, and everybody looks at him and says, boy, can he hold his own physically in the ACC? I mean, I guess we still have to answer that question, but he's doing pretty well so far. He's hanging in there. And remember, this is a kid that weighs between 180, 185 pounds. You're asking Soaking him to play wet. center. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like, it, it, against Clemson, he's going up against Elijah Thomas, who weighs about 245 pounds. He's giving away 65 pounds. I mean, go out there and find something that weighs 65 pounds and try to pick it up. I mean, it's what Marek's having to deal with. Um, he did a wonderful job. He used his athleticism. He used his quickness to his advantage. You know, he was moving around in the middle of that zone. I can remember only one time all night where, because of the ball movement on the perimeter, Moret got caught behind Thomas and was just pinned to the point where he had no chance at, at stopping the shot. Um, so he does a good job, but you know, he's going to get into foul trouble like he did against Notre Dame. And Barama came in both games, Notre Dame and Clemson, and he's done a good job. But I think with the way the center position is going, I'm not ready to say everything's solved yet. I think it's going to be a game by game night-by-night night process. Matchup-by-matchup matchup process. Exactly, and I think the Pascal Chukwu did not play against Clemson. I think partly 
it wasn't just his recent play, which hasn't been great. I think partly it was a matchup deal that Jim Beheim wanted to put in guys who would make Elijah Thomas work on the defensive end and pull him out away from the basket. And as long as Marek and Barama didn't get into huge foul trouble on defensive end, he was going to go with that. One of these busy stretches in ACC play, Syracuse gets Georgia Tech on Saturday at the Carrier Dome. Let's start with the Yellow Jackets, Mike. They gave Virginia Tech a heck of a push on Wednesday night, only winning that game by three. Virginia Tech, a really good three-point shooting team. They did not shoot well that night. What kind of challenge do the Orange have with the Yellow Jackets? Georgia Tech's a really good defensive team that struggles to put the ball in the basket. Um, and they're much better at home. Syracuse has experienced that trip to Atlanta a few times since joining the ACC. It's no fun to play Georgia Tech down there. Now, this game, though, is going to be at the Carrier Dome. Uh, Georgia Tech, I don't know if their offense is going to travel, uh, whether they're going to be able to score against that Syracuse zone. Syracuse plays defense the way they get against Clemson. I don't think Georgia Tech can score enough to beat them. However, you know, we'll see. You know, it's Georgia Tech's still a pretty good team. And like you said, they gave Virginia Tech, which I think is really good this year, they gave them a real tough game. And had they not turned the ball over late on their last possession, they had a chance to win or tie that game in the final seconds. And, squandered it with a turnover, but still, that was an impressive So you're telling me another game in the 50s? Most likely, Great. yeah, because Georgia Tech likes it there. They do. Yep. They kind of drag you in the mud with them. A little school from Durham, North Carolina follows that, Mike. Duke, uh, Monday night, yes. the number one team in the country. I got nothing. How do you beat Duke and Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett and this loaded team of, of Duke Blue, Blue Devils? I mean, that's why you play the games. I'll be watching, but Syracuse is going to be up against it. You wait until Duke's finished with warm-ups and they go back into their locker room and you have somebody lock that door. That's how you do that's it. The, these guys are good. And, and to go down the Cameron Indoor, which is one of the toughest environments in all of college basketball, it, this is going to be a challenge. Um, you play your zone. You pack it in and you see if these guys can make enough threes to beat you. Um, because if they allow penetration or and they allow Duke to run, they're going to get blown out of the gym. So you got to cut off transition, uh, no fast breaks, no Zion, Williamson, highlight reel dunks. Exactly. But, and let's see if guys like Cameron Reddish and RJ Barrett and Trey Jones can beat you from the outside. We will uh, be with you after that game next week here on Orange Weekly. In the meantime, thanks to Mike Waters. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to our friends at Krause Health. We'll talk to you next time.